applying for your first data job can be scary. So in today's video, I'll show you how to craft a resume that gets recruiters excited to call you back, whether you have prior experience or not. So let's make sure your first impression is unforgettable. The first thing that you want to take care when you are preparing and applying for a data job is to set your resume up for success. This is done in two stages. The first one is to follow a clear, simple and well-defined template format. I've got a free resume template for you to download. More on that towards the end of this video. So use a well-structured resume template. What this ensures is it follows the heading structure. So most of you may not know this, but you have got H1, H2, H3, H4 like that. These are different kinds of resume headings, not just resume in web pages and other documents as well, that you can use to neatly lay out all your experiences, achievements, skills and awards and everything in a neat order. So you would want to set up your resume in such a format so that it is easy for the recruiters, whether they are individuals or ATS systems to read your resume and understand all your skills and achievements clearly. Don't go for fancy formats. This is something that may not work very well in a majority of cases. Again, you may want to experiment a little bit here and there depending on the type of company that you're applying for, what their culture is and what kind of job it is. But for a majority of data jobs, you may want to stick to a simple, well-defined template. The second idea here is once you create that template, make sure that you individually customize the resume for the job you're applying for. For example, imagine you are applying for an entry-level data position in a sports analytics company. You may want to highlight the areas of your prior skills, experiences, volunteer projects, or coursework, anything that connects the dots to this sports analytics position that you're applying for. Don't just give the same resume out to all the 50 different companies that you're applying for. Instead, carefully go through the job description, the skills that are wanted, as well as what is the company's general business mission and what their goals are and align yourself with that a little bit. This way, it kind of shows that you are putting in that effort to customize your message to the audience. So that is the key idea. Again, we can use some powerful tools to automate all of this process. I have prepared a Notion template that helps you manage your resume better. It has a checklist for you. It also lists all the key action webs and other things, as well as it can do an automatic match between a job and your resume and tell you what changes you need to make. I'll talk more about this towards the end of this video. In this segment, let me share three tips on how to build impact when you have limited or no experience. So the first one is use your prior experiences, whether they're class projects, coursework, or volunteer experiences, and use them to communicate the kind of transferable skills and technology skills that you have. For example, let's say you managed a college festival. You could use that to communicate that you have got leadership skills, you have got finance skills, and you have got spreadsheet skills, which I hope you use it to manage those finances. So use those things, the prior things that you have done, and communicate the key technical and transferable skills that you're bringing to the job. I talked to my wife, Jyotsra. She has been working as a senior data analyst for many years now. And she frequently hires people and she's part of the hiring process many, many times. So I've asked her, hey, what would you look for in an entry level position? Because they don't have any prior experience. What is it that you would look in their resume when you're judging them to shortlist or not shortlist? Here is what she has got to say. So Joe, you have been a senior data analyst for a while and you have been part of many hiring scenarios. What is it that you look for in a fresher data analyst when they apply for the job? What sort of a thing do you want to see in their resume? Since they are freshers and they wouldn't have any work experience, uh, I would like to see some kind of data projects they have done in the college in their resume. 
uh, or maybe some of the data courses uh, they have done uh, uh, in their college. Okay. And what would be a big red flag for you in the resume? If the resume is not tailored properly according to the job description, uh, then it's a big no-no. Like some of the uh, job descriptions would have something like good to have uh, skills or must uh, have skills. So I think if those are not there in a resume, then I think that's a big no-no. Okay, thank you. The second idea is bullet points are your friend. When it comes to writing a resume, don't write paragraphs. Instead, just write bullet points. And when you are writing those bullet points, follow the ATR structure. It stands for action, task, result. So going back to the college finance uh, festival finances, you could simply say managed college festival finances. But if you follow the ATR approach, you could write a sentence that goes a bit more like successfully managed college festival finances to the tune of $23,000 using Excel and Python or something like that. So this actually communicates that you have done an action successfully managed of the task, which is college festival finances, and the outcomes are, of course, the money, $23,000, but also skills like Excel and Python that all jump out. So use that ATR approach. In my Notion template, which I'm going to talk about towards the end of this video, I've got a list of 10 bullet point examples that you can use. Uh, just use the tone and style to customize based on what you have done as well as 40 strong action verbs. So you can use these verbs to write your resume better rather than simple words like used or ran or created. Using these words kind of makes them sound a bit more punchy and authentic in my experience, in my opinion. So more on this, that later in the video. And the third point is, use the summary section of your resume to communicate directly with the recruiter and Tell them that you are really passionate and you have the desire to work in that job. So rather than keeping the same summary for every resume, based on the job you're applying, let's say you're applying for the sports analytics job, you could write a summary that is a bit more customized for that. But again, don't go overboard with that. Write one or two sentences max and keep it in such a way that it is a little bit personal and addresses directly for that job. One of my close friends here in Wellington, Jonathan, works as a senior data analyst at a data lead and he also frequently has data analysts. So I asked him, hey, what is it that you look for in a resume when you are bringing in fresh data analysts as well as what is a big turnoff for you? You see that in the resume, you're like, okay, we're not uh, shortlisting this person. So here is what he has got to say about this. Hey, Jonathan. So you hired some data analysts in the past. Mm -hmm. What is it that you look for in a fresh data analyst? Like, what is it that you look for in their resume? Often people who are starting out on their data analyst journey don't have much experience. So where you don't have much real world experience, I would recommend uh, following your passion and uh, using your passions as an opportunity to apply your data analysis skills. So for example, if you're passionate about climate change, you could use uh, public climate change data to do some analysis and reporting and help build a portfolio to support okay. your demonstration of your skills. Awesome. And would you expect this portfolio to be brought with them or linked in some sort of a place like LinkedIn or GitHub? Yeah, often with um, reviewing at job applications, you have a lot of applications to review. So I would just include a link to it and make mm -hmm. sure you call it out in your cover letter. Awesome. Awesome. And what would be like a big red flag or a no-no in a fresh data analyst resume? I think people who are starting out, uh, and even people who are senior, they, they saturate their CVs with every single language that they might have used, mm -hmm. even if it's just for a month or two. So focus on the ones that you actually do feel quite confident in. Um, and if the job calls for a specific uh, skill set, a uh, language, um, find my, uh, maybe how your current skills are transferable to that language, but don't oversaturate your application. Awesome. Thank you. In this segment, let's talk about how do you set your resume apart from thousands of others who are applying for these entry-level positions. And I've got two practical suggestions for you. The first one is set up a strong and professional social media presence. Now, when it comes to social media, there are lots of different options out there. 
but the two main things that matter to you in the professional space are a linkedin page as well as a github profile so create these two they are pretty much free and easy to set up but when it comes to linkedin there are a few mistakes that a lot of people make so i'm going to highlight them the first one is make sure that your linkedin profile is set to public the second one is make sure that your linkedin page or linkedin profile is aligned to your resume if you are saying some achievements or some skills in the resume make sure that they are also listed on the linkedin page the third thing is any interactions that you are doing on linkedin keep them professional and valuable so if you are reacting to someone's post or someone's article just don't say simple things like great point or i agree instead actually contribute to the discussion this helps kind of setting you apart if and when the recruiters go and look at your linkedin profile likewise on the github publish some of your previous work projects and showcase what you have achieved so that it kind of sets you apart and an extra mild thing that you can do here is you can also maybe create your own personal website or maybe other kinds of social media where your passion is reflected this is an extra step but it doesn't cost much and most of the time personal websites can be created for free using tools like wordpress or notion one of my online mentors dawal who by the way runs an excellent code basics channel has got this to say about social media you need to remember one thing folks online presence is a new form of resume it's your live resume you are telling your live story on a day to day basis so like he says social media is an extension of your resume so think of it like your public resume that everybody can see and use it to elevate your online presence the second aspect that i want to highlight here is avoid any simple mistakes any obvious mistakes on your resume so make sure that there are no typos no spelling errors no grammatical errors no factual errors and this is easy to do just print out your resume read it and highlight any mistakes you are making go and fix them but we are not done print it again read it and then wait few hours and read it again when you look at something with fresh eyes you might spot something that you have missed otherwise and use that as an opportunity to fix all those errors so do that the second thing is also make sure that your resume is formatted in a simple way and it looks the same on the screen as well as on the printout so any make sure that you save it as a pdf and the pdf and your word or any other tool that you use to create the resume are kind of looking the same because many times what happens is it looks one way on the screen but the moment you print out or you export it as a pdf it looks slightly different so make sure that that is not happening and the layout is consistent and you are following that heading structure so that it is easy for both humans and machines to read and this brings us to my pre resume template and a resume checker tool that I have built using notion notion ai is sponsoring this video and i'm using notion ai to create this tool what it does is really simple but also amazing if you put your resume as well as the job description into the template in the two sections where you can put that and then run the update uh, that ai checker what it will do is it will compare your resume with the job description and then it tells you here are the keywords that you missed out or here are the experiences that you should highlight or here is how you can customize your resume so that it is more suitable for the job that you are applying so this is a valuable tool and i've made a free notion template for you you can find the link for that in the video description so check it out in the notion template i have also included a list of action words 40 action words that you can use to when you are writing in the resume because many times we use simple words like ran used or created instead use these action words so that your resume sounds a bit more punchy and better to the recruiters the template also includes a checklist so that you can use it to kind of say whether you have done this for the resume and all of the common mistakes and everything is highlighted in that checklist so you can use that checklist to prepare your resume so that it works best for the entry level data positions that you are applying and finally the resume also includes 10 examples of atr style bullet points you can use that style and tone to customize and then update your resume so that your bullet points are also much better when it comes to your resume so use that free template the link for that is available in the video description 
like I said, I've used Notion AI to build the whole thing. And it is an amazing companion in Notion that I've been using to not just build this, but also streamline and improve my workflows as well as do things faster when it comes to setting up checklists or creating uh, bullet points or tracking all my notes. So check out Notion AI using the link in the video description. Thank you Notion for sponsoring this video and I wish you all the very best in your search for that faster data analyst job. I'll catch you out there. Bye.